Welcome to a new Fixing Fashion video. So in this video we're going to show you how to upgrade your clothes. Because in the last videos we've seen how to care for it and repair it to keep it longer, but now we're going to really modify it and change it. Sometimes it's about combining shirts together, or shortening the pants, or giving it a new color. Alright, so before we start, make sure to check the basic sections in our academy, where you can see some basic stitching and sewing techniques, which you're going to need in this video. And if you have any questions or want to chat, make sure to join our Discord. Alright, so now let's dive into it. But to be honest, I don't know anything about this topic, but Alicia knows. Hi, I'm Alicia, and I'm going to be your help for today. So before you waste your clothes or left them for donating, there are many ways to upgrade them or customize them. So we've divided all these techniques in four chapters. So in this chapter, I'm gonna show you how to resize. And being able to resize gives you the power to wear everything. For instance, that 70s jacket from your dad or something that you saw in the vintage shop and you couldn't fit. Or for instance, Dave's vintage pants. So Dave wants shorts as he's moving to Portugal. Yeah. And before he wants to make them shorter, we need to know where we want to cut it. So I like to fit them on and I want to above the knees, so that's where I pin it. Then take them off. Lay them on the table and mark down from the edge of the leg to your mark. Then I want to use the same length all around the leg. And then do the same for the back. So this is gonna be your cutting line. And now you can chop it. Quick tip, you can also use your scraps for other sewing projects. So now this is done, and we did this kind of with a raw edge a raw finish, but you can also do it with a clean finish. And how to do this, you can find in the academy. So we just made the pen shorter and now we're going to make the pens smaller. As these are way too big for me on the hips and I need to take the excess fabric off. But before I'm going to do that, I need to turn them inside out. After you turn them inside out, you need to put them on and pin down the excess fabric. Then you can mark down your new sewing line. Quick tip, put the pins in the opposite direction so you can sew over it. Then chop it off, make sure not to be too close to your sewing line. So now I finish it off with a little zigzag stitch. So these are now finished and this is my result. To make them more neat, you can always iron it. So with these pants, we uh, resized the side seams and we made it from an XL now to a size M. So these were my dad's wedding pants and as you can see there's kind of a lot of excess fabric so it's kind of too big. So we resized them to make it smaller and now a smaller person fits it. So this skirt was too short, the brown was the original one and we extended it with this lighter piece of fabric. So these dark pink pants were the original pants and they were too short, so we extended them with old pants that were actually being thrown away. So here we changed the t-shirt by putting an elastic in there and now you can change the shape or the length from it. So 
So these were a few examples of resizing. Now, if you don't like your clothes anymore or you want to give it a new function, you can bring it to a next level. Next up, remake. So in this chapter, we're going to remake and you can go pretty well with this one. As for instance, I can combine this shirt with a stain together with a shirt with a print that I don't like. So let's do it. Ideally, you want to combine two shirts together that are around the same size. So now I'm going to fold to see how we want to cut it. We want to hide a bit of the print and remove the stain. So before you cut it, you can still play with the sizes, as I can still make this bigger or make it smaller. Then you can cut it. And then you can do the same on the other shirt. So these are the ones that you want to use. Any other ones are good for patching. So now you want to pin these together. Good side on good side. Starting with the collar. So now we pin them all together, back and front, and it's now inside out, so it's time to sew. Then we sew together with the zigzag stitch. So now this is done, front and back, and now it's time to make a normal jeans into workwear jeans. <laughs> okay, so let's say you have these pants, you love them, you wore them out again, but now they're so worn out that you can't use them anymore for everyday life. So let's add a new function to it by adding new pockets to it, and now they are workwear jeans. So before you make your pockets, you need to have patterns. And the cool thing is, is that if you make them yourself, is that you can fit them to your tools perfectly. So we're pinning our pattern on some leftover denim, as we want this to be durable for our workwear jeans. Then I can cut it. I don't need to cut a one centimeter allowance extra, as it is already in my pattern. Then you can remove the pins. Then repeat the steps for all the pockets and then you have them all ready. So before you pin your pockets on your pants, you need to top stitch the opening of the pockets first, as later on you can't reach them. So now you can pin the pockets where you want them. So to make the pocket extra strong, I want to do a double top stitch. And quick tip, I can use the side of the foot as my guideline on the side of the pocket to stitch straight. So now we're finished. We added two more pockets on the front and on the side and a holder. So now you can start working. So here we added some pockets and a loop to give it some more workwear functionality. So here we combine two sweaters together and you can create patterns with it. For instance here, a jacket pattern. So here we added the pocket to the sweater to make it more functional. So here we combine two shirts together in the most impossible cut. 
So on this pants we put some buttons on the sides extra and on the back. And now we can put an apron on the side or the back or wherever you want. And we made this apron from half a skirt, but you can also use half of a jeans or pants. So here we combined two shirts together, one had a stain and one we didn't really like the print from, so we put them together. So here we combined two shirts together and we did it in a curved shape. And the nice thing is with combining is that you can do it also in a negative way, so you don't have any waste. So here we combine two garments into a dress, and it actually is two men's shirts. So with this dress we combine two shirts together, and instead of a t-shirt, you now have a dress. And to make it more fit, you can then tie the sleeves to the back. So this dress was kind of too large, so we resized it with the overcast stitch, which is quite a visible option. We did it on the in the middle of the dress on the back of the front. Um, we did it on the bust and we did the same stitch as a detail on the edges of the dress. So here we sliced up two shirts diagonally. So this creates a pattern and with this one to connect them with each other we used a lock machine. So here we combine two shirts and we slice them up in more diamond shapes which create this kind of pattern. You can get a more punky feeling when you wear the stitches from the outside or you can wear it with the seams on the inside and then it looks like this. So for these pants we had two worn out pants first and then we combined them together and used only the good sides. So on this coat we added something functional. So here you can see the strip and we made different kinds of widths in the stitching, so you can add, for instance, a phone to it, but also a pen. So in this chapter we're going to recolor, as sometimes your clothes are kind of fine still, but you got them stained, or the colors are faded, or you got a bit sweaty and they're becoming a bit yellowish, like over here. So there are two ways of recoloring them, the natural way and the chemical one. Let's start with the chemical one. The chemical dye is a quite an easy and quick fix way of recoloring your shirt. You have them in many colors and you have them in many brands, but it does have an environmental impact, but it also could save a shirt. So the choice is up to you, but first let us show how to do it. Here we have a pile of mixed clothes. We put them wet in the washing machine, put the dye in, turn on the machine and wait. So this is how it came out. As you can see, some are fully colored, some are lighter shade, and some didn't dye that much. This is because your garments contain blends or are fully synthetic and they are way harder to dye. More about this in Academy. So let's go to natural dyeing. So now I'm going to show you a little bit of the natural dyeing, as it is already done for ages, but we forgot a little bit about it and now we see it coming back. As it is environmental friendly, as you will be surprised what comes out of orange peels or avocado peels or, for instance, a red cabbage. The only downside is, is that it is very experimental, but that could also be fun, depends on you. So let's color that sweaty shirt. So let's say you have this sweaty shirt. Before we start dyeing, we want to prepare it first. And then it's done in two steps. So the first step is scoring. With scoring, you take off the excess sweat and you fully deep clean it and take off all the dirt. Then the second step is morning and this really helps the dye bite in the fabric. So here you see an unprepared shirt and a prepared shirt. And here you see that the sweat is totally out, all the dirt is out and it's really almost back to its natural color. So for the recipes, have a look in Academy and we'll give you some tips and tricks on how to do this. For now we're gonna dye this one with avocado. So first we bring a big pot of water to a boil. So once it's boiling, we can start putting in our pigment, which is avocado. So 
So this has now been boiling for an hour, so I can see if the skin's out of my dye. Take the sieve out. And this is gonna be your dye bed. Now you can take a wet shirt into your dye bed and leave it in as long as you want till you like the color. This is gonna take a while and we like to leave it overnight, but we already prepared a shirt yesterday and and this is the result. A very nice baby pink avocado dyed shirt. So this is just avocado. So here, let me show you a few tests what we did with natural dyeing. We tried different kinds of textiles out, so they gave different kinds of shades. So here we tried out the soak water of black beans. Here we tried out red onion peels, yellow onion peels, turmeric, chamomile, and then you have the dyes that give uh, different kinds of color shades from one product. For instance, the avocado, uh, the nuts give a darker shade color than, for instance, the skins, which give a lighter shade of pink. And then you can also mix up uh, dyes together. For instance, coffee and rust water will give it a more black. Then you have the red cabbage. And with the red cabbage, you can dye with its original color which is a bit more blue, purple, but you can play with its pH level and then you can add more acid, which is lemon juice and becomes more pink, or you can make it more natural with baking soda and becomes more green blue. So let me show you a few examples applied on clothing. So we dyed this shirt with some avocado skins and the nuts and we left it overnight and then it gives it a more salmon color. So here we dyed a pair of jeans with acorns and we created the pattern with a shibori technique. So these were just a few examples on how to recolor your garment, but sometimes you don't want to recolor the whole entire garment. You just want to do it on specific places, which creates a print. And that brings us to the next chapter, decorate. One way of decorating can be by creating patterns. For instance, the with the technique shibori, hereby you fold the garment and you press it and put it in a dye bed, which creates this kind of patterns. Another way of making a pattern can be the tie-dye. In this way, you tie this all together and put it in a dye bed, and it creates this more spacey pattern. Then the last one, you can do it way more freestyle and do it with a brush and you can create any kind of pattern that you want. So another way of decorating can be making prints. And making prints can be done with, for instance, textile markers, as you can see, for instance, over here. Don't do this with normal markers as they might fade out in the washing machine. Or you can use, for instance, transfer paper and print out the prints that you want out of the printer and iron it on, on your garments. You can do this, for instance, to cover up a stain or to add a logo to your garments. And the last technique of decorating can be used with a single thread. For instance, when you're using embroidery techniques, like over here. This can be done for personalizing it, or you can use embroidery stitches when you are already patching up something, for instance here. Or you can use it while you're resizing a garment by using a decorative stitch for making it smaller. Or you can express yourself with your sewing machine by creating a whole abstract painting. So here we decorated the pants with some patches and some stitching with the sewing machine. And I went a little bit mental with it. So here we decorated a white uh, pants that was kind of stained and we dyed it first with avocado dye and then we brushed it with some rust water which creates a chemical reaction and the color becomes more grayish. 
These pants are tie-dyed in bleach. So these pants uh, had already a bleach stain on there, so we decorated it and made a pattern out of more bleach stains and with a brush. So here we decorated the jacket by tracing the existing seams with just textile markers. As you can see here the pockets and here the back lining. So here we decorated the shirt to cover up a stain with textile markers. So we decorated this dress with some transfer paper. We used the transfer paper to cover up a stain over here. But to draw not too much attention on that cover-up, we use the transfer paper all over the dress. So here we decorated the coat by stitching over the existing stitches with a contrasting color. So here we decorated the pants with an embroidery stitch. And as you can see, the area of the embroidery is getting kind of worn out. So we also used it as a repair. Okay, that was it. Hopefully you got super excited about all the techniques you saw in this video. For now, if you want more information, go to our academy and use hashtag FixingFashion to join our community. And if you have any questions, go to our Discord. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you next time.